I'm taping this on the morning of Thursday, August the 3rd. It's the third anniversary, as it happens, of the massacre, the genocide, no other word for it, of the Yazidi people in northern Iraq by ISIS. It is exactly three years to the day that ISIS marched into the mountains of northern Iraq and captured and abducted and slaughtered thousands of Yazidis, many of whom remain in captivity to this day. Now you will know or recall as a result of news coverage that the Yazidis are the ethnic and religious group that has inhabited northern Iraq for centuries and has been subject to intermittent genocidal assaults, but nothing as horrendous as that of ISIS. ISIS insists that the men convert to Islam and if they don't, they're immediately murdered. The young boys are dragooned into roles as child soldiers. The women are subject to sexual slavery, auctioned off at slave auctions. And young girls as young as the age of eight and nine are subject to serial raping. As a matter of fact, there's been a New York Times piece in the last few days interviewing some of the girls who had escaped from captivity when Mosul was liberated and they went back to their Yazidi families and they are in such a state of shock and psychological trauma that they cannot speak. They sleep all the time. Now everyone knows it's a genocide. It has been called a genocide by many reputable authorities and by a number of countries. And in fact, just last year, the United Nations had a commission of inquiry which characterized what was being done to the Yazidis as an unequivocal genocide. One of the members of that commission, a fellow with whom I happened to work several years ago, a man named Witted Mottenborn, indicated that individual perpetrators are known, their locations are known, they could presumably be nabbed by the, by the technological military complex we have. But to what point? If we tried to bring them before the International Criminal Court on a charge of genocide in order to seek some justice, we wouldn't succeed because a resolution in the Security Council would be vetoed by Russia, as they have vetoed similar resolutions on Syria. What a world, eh? At one end you have the idiocy of Trump, at the other end you have the depravity of Putin, and between those poles live all the rest of us, watching the ineluctable erosion of freedom, human decency, and often humankind. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.